Hey everyone, it's Brennan, and I'm excited to be back with a V68 update for the MetaQuest 3. A couple things that have changed is that the MetaQuest mobile app is now the Meta Horizon app. There's actually a new UI for the mobile app, as well as some safety center updates, and they've actually rolled out a play now, pay later option for the MetaQuest. Although I can't show it here, there's actually a new experimental feature that's coming in V68 where you can enable graphic performance improvements. They've also reworked the keyboard a little bit, made it more maneuverable within your space to work with the new window design that they're going for. So now you have the freedom to move it around and position it wherever you want, although I do think that they may have put the reset position a little bit high because it likes to jump back up in your face when you hit a new menu. And I feel like this is badly positioned or should be configurable. Now something else that I'm excited about is that they have reworked the mouse pointer and added more features for customization for it that I haven't noticed in previous updates. It also seems to be more context sensitive and kind of warps itself around on different planes depending on which, uh, which panel you're actually working on. It really does feel a little bit more streamlined and more user-friendly. And there are customization settings allowing you to adjust the size of it and scrolling speed, etc. Another positive feature that they've added is an audio balance option where you can adjust the audio balance between left and right, as well as set mono mode and live captions. This really does improve accessibility and configurability. I personally always love the option for captions, so I think this is pretty useful. Now, I don't think this is special to this update. I think it's been here, but there's actually an option to configure your controller buttons or reconfigure them for your needs. This is, of course, a great accessibility option, but it also lends itself to giving you a little bit more customization when a lot of VR apps don't really seem to consider that. There are still some games that don't seem to give you some binding options when they really should. Now, something else new is you're supposed to be able to pair the controllers for the headset from the headset now. I don't see the menu under the controller section that's supposed to be here. I'm guessing that's still rolling out. But this is actually in the release notes, and it's mentioning that no longer are you required to use the app. The headset can do this itself. There are also improvements to the camera, allowing you to take higher resolution images, at least on the Quest 3. I figured it would be a setting you set, but it's actually, apparently, the default has now changed, uh, and it's just set that way. It went from 1440 by 1440 and is now at 2160 by 2160 for screenshots. Another feature that we're supposed to be getting is Meta AI. So I couldn't get it to launch. I don't see it as an app and it hasn't replaced voice commands. So I'm guessing it hasn't rolled out to my headset yet. Another great feature that has come to the headset is cloud backup settings. Not only can you now toggle cloud backup right here, you also are able to do encryption, which can give you a little bit more peace of mind. They're also gradually rolling out the ability to toggle which apps are getting backed up and when they were backed up. So that's really cool. Now for the feature that I was most excited for, the Layout app. Although so far it's kind of limited in some of its features, it is so useful if you like to redecorate your room or want to kind of take quick measurements. There's so many features in this that I love. And I really hope that they keep adding more and more as time goes on. So one of the most exciting is the measuring tape option. So it actually lets you measure from one point in 3D space to another. But how can I trust how accurate it's going to be? You know what I mean? Like how accurate really is the tracking and 3D spatial awareness of your headset? That's not something I'm just going to trust. So let's go ahead and get a tape measure. So it was what, roughly three foot, three foot, two inches. 
That's pretty much bang on exactly what I'm getting on my tape. That's excellent. But that's pretty short distance, right? What if it was a little bit further? For the most part, about 14 to 15 foot is the max a person's gonna be measuring inside. So let's give that a shot. Let's go diagonal here. Gonna have to brace my tape though. Let's see. This is a perfect situation. You'd wanna use something like this because this, the tape isn't so rigid. Holy crap. That's bang on, 14 and five inches. We're within a quarter to a half an inch over 14 and a half feet. I'm gonna say that's probably a win. That's perfectly usable for most of your interior decorating needs. We also have this level tool, which I'm not exactly sure at what uses it has. I guess you can see if a table is roughly the same height as somewhere else. It seems to be good for squaring off different walls and such, but it doesn't look like it actually truly gives you an idea of how level like a spot in your floor is. So I was a little confused at first, but if you're trying to draw a line across your room and see where something lines up, it's kind of useful. Of course, where some of you might have seen previews from people, the main attraction is adding furniture. You can throw a TV up on the wall and see if it'll fit. You can adjust the dimensions so you can tell way before you even buy a TV what it's going to look like if you put it there. It gives you tons of resizing and tilting options and lets you just kind of test it out fully. Although it would be nice if there were some different models and stuff like that. This is a good start. Thankfully, there's other options than just TVs. You can throw a table in your room. Of course, it's a pretty simple design. You can only really do rectangular or square. But that still gives you an idea if you wanted to throw a dining room table in a room or create a side table and see if you what height you'd want it at. Personally, I'm going to have to refrain from putting any more furniture in the office because as it gets in the way of videos like this. But say you have a futon like I have in here and you wanted to test out exactly what height you want the chair to sit at relative to a table. That's a perfect use case. I think that's kind of a great idea when my wife and I go to redecorate the uh, living room. It gives you an idea of what kind of sitting level you want to sit at. You could throw the TV on the wall and see if the viewing angles seem good. Positioning and figuring out a rough size is one of those things that's always difficult. And so I think as they evolve this application and, and maybe put more realistic models in, that's going to actually add a lot of value, I think. Honestly, Amazon needs to get in quick and work with Meta because they already offer something kind of like this on their Amazon app. But bringing that to the Quest, that would be a game changer and would really push me to do more furniture shopping on Amazon with the ease you'd be able to test stuff out in. I think that really covers everything that happened in this update. There is a new low battery alert that lets you know with an audio signal before you take the headset off so you know to charge it. And there is some other graphical improvements that you don't have to opt into. And that doesn't seem to be specific to the Quest 3. Overall, I'm still so impressed with how fast Meta is rolling out these updates to the PTC. It's actually getting to the point where it's hard for me to keep up with them. Although I usually upload on a Thursday or a Friday, I'm probably going to have to upload earlier next week because the V69 update has some major changes that I'm going to want to get into the public eye as quick as possible. Well, as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.